Hi everybody, I'm going to go over the photoelectric effect uh, homework. I'm going to point out something uh, very useful in your reference tables that you probably did or isn't aware of to make some of your calculations easier. And then uh, I want you to see that we're, many of the solutions have the same approach. So I didn't necessarily intentionally want you to do the same thing each time, but it's not a bad thing because it reinforces an important concept, especially uh, in interpreting this graph. Okay, so I set up all the problems for you in a previous tutorial. I just want to give you the numerical answers just so you can feel like you're doing it right. So the um, A, we're looking for what is the um, kinetic energy max, and we showed the equation. Anyway, if you do that, you should have gotten 3 electron volts, or if you did things in joules, that's going to be 4.8 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. Okay, and B, finding Planck's constant related to the slope, and then you multiply it by the charge of an electron. If you did the slope properly, uh, actually I don't have it, but the slope I based on the line was like 2 volts minus 0 volts divided by 5 times 10 to the 14th hertz, and then I multiply it by that charge of an electron, I get 6.4 times 10 to the negative 34th. So I think the College Board purposely set this up so you don't just write down the 6.63. There is a slight uncertain or error in that, and that's to be expected. Okay, um, if we're finding the work function, uh, again, in electron volts, it's 2.1, which is less than the maximum kinetic energy, which would make sense. And in joules, that's 3.3 times 10 to the negative 19th. And I told you this would shift. It would shift leftward. So if you actually did a sketch, just make sure it's parallel to the first one and shift it to the left. Okay, and that's when you're wondering why that is. It's basically saying this metal, whatever it is, because why work function change is based on the metal, is uh, it holds on to it with less energy. It's in a, the electrons that are being ionized in the photoelectric effect are in a shallower uh, potential well. Okay, so um, actually... I want to point something out to you now, and we'll see where it comes up. Planck's constant. Here is the value I gave in your notes. However, sometimes it's more convenient to do it in terms of electron volt seconds if your um, energy is already in electron volts, so you don't have to do the conversion. So that's nice to know. Another thing that's really nice is they give you the combination of H times C. That comes up quite a bit. So rather than constantly typing those two numbers in your calculator and multiplying them, here is the value. And sometimes it's convenient when your uh, energy is in electron volts already, it will do HC, and note that the units here are nanometers. So that corresponds to situations where you want to use a wavelength to help you find energy. You just got to make sure the wavelength is in nanometers, and we'll see if that comes up a little later on in some of these problems. Okay, so in this one, it's very similar to the first one, except there's just no graph. They want you to cal calculate Planck's constant here. And you, don't, you can't use the Ke um, equation because you don't give, have Ke, but it is related to that. Basically, you're given a V1 and a corresponding F1, a frequency that corresponds to a stopping potential. And then you're also given a second set of data. And the idea is that this Q times V is going to equal HF minus some work function. And if we plot it, we get the same graph that we saw before. But what I want you to understand is the, what they want you to do to find H is H is in a sense a slope. You need to use both sets of data. And so if it's a slope of that uh, voltage frequency graph, or the, which is going to look something like that, then it's going to be the change in voltage over the change in frequency multiplied by Q. So long story short, that's just going to be delta V over the differences in frequencies times the Q charge of an electron. So you can, basically it's going to be 3 minus 1 all divided by the two different frequencies. Long story short, you get 6.4 once again times 10 to the negative 34 joule seconds. So don't just put 6.63. B, calculate the work function. So like before, um, we can try to say the work function is equal to the threshold frequency when the kinetic energy is zero, but that won't work here because we don't know what the, uh, when it is zero. So what we can do is the full equation, where we're going to say the kinetic energy, I'm going to start off with the base equation, kinetic energy of a photoelectron is equal to uh, H of a frequency minus the work function. 
So we have two choices for this. It doesn't matter which one you choose, but you've got to match this up. So how are we going to get KE? Well, that's just QV. So I'm going to choose the first situation. So I'm going to take the stopping potential for the first electron multiplied by charge electron, because that's going to equal the KE, and that's going to be HF1 minus the work function. Okay, so you plug in the numbers, and it doesn't matter whether you use the first set of data or the second set of data. Um, I'll trust you can do that. That's going to give you 5 times 10 to the negative 19th joules, or you could have 3.14 electron volts. Okay, either one will work. In fact, here's a suggestion. If the easiest way to do this one, right, or when I'm using this equation, is just put one electron times, let's say, 3 volts. And then I'm going to use a frequency here. Here, if, if so since this is an electron volts, this one, I would use the H value that's in electron volt seconds. And then I get my answer in electron volts. And that's probably the easiest thing to do here, rather than convert everything to joules. C. Will green light of a particular wavelength uh, create the photoelectric effect? And basically, what you're the, I'm not going to give the answer just yet, but the answer is yes, if... Okay, the energy of that, which is going to be hc over lambda, because they gave us a wavelength, is greater than the work function. And that work function is uh, 3.14 electron volts. So to calculate this, they gave me a wavelength. I'm going to use the reference table's value for hc. I'm going to use this thing right here. Because it gives me electron volts, it's an, it's an HC, in and in an electron volts, and nanometers, which means I can use it directly with my wavelength. Okay, you don't have to do that. I just think it's a whole lot more convenient. So if I put in 1.24 times 10 to the 3 EV nanometers, I get divided by the wavelength. The wavelength was given as 500 times, or 5 times 10 to the negative 7th. That's the same as 500 nanometers. Okay, so this is 1240 divided by 500. Worked it out. That's 2.48 electron volts. That's less than the 3.14. So the answer is no. It's not going to set it off or create the photoelectric effect. Okay, multiple guess. Uh, which graph shows kinetic energy uh, as versus frequency? Well, if you're wondering how do I do that, get an equation, that's HF minus phi. So we see KE is proportional to F, but since it's a phi, it's not going to pass to the origin. So this is going to be A, which we've seen before, so that shouldn't be a surprise. 37, a little bit more involved. Which graph shows photoelectric current versus intensity? So, this goes back to the whole idea of why, um, you know, if you shine brighter and brighter light on something, you get more photo current. Basically, my photo current, so I'm just going to call it current, I'm not going to use I because I'm going to use I for intensity, is uh, proportional, right, to the number of electrons. I'm going to call number of electrons E. All right, so the more electrons you have, the more current you're going to have. And the number of electrons is proportional to intensity. Okay, so a brighter source doesn't give you higher energy electrons, it just gives you more of them. So I can see current is proportional to intensity, so this is going to be D. Next one is related to this idea of number of electrons. So we did a problem like this on the Planck's Law homework. This is a power, they want the best estimate of photons per unit time. So the idea is that if we... Um, emit that radio wave for a certain amount of time, the amount of energy release is simply the power multiplied by that time. And that's going to equal to the number of photons releasing at times times the energy of each photon. Okay, so the energy of each photon is this. If I multiply it by the number of them, I get the total energy. So what I'm really solving for is N over T, and N over T is going to be P over HF. Okay, now they gave us a wavelength, so I'm going to change that to P uh, lambda over HC because F is HC, or, or excuse me, F is C over lambda. This is where I can use the nice value of HC in a reference table and multiply by this and this. Anyway, long story short, when you do that, I believe you get 10 to the 30th photons per second. Okay, so take a look at that equation I just had. Uh, up there and make sure you understand all parts of it. Okay, work function. Uh, what is a work function? Again, the idea is work function oops, equals 
so if I have uh, kinetic energy equals HF minus the work function, the work, when the kinetic energy is zero, it means we just have enough energy to overcome the work function. So the work function is going to be equal to HF naught, that uh, threshold frequency. So if I solve for, uh, what am I solving for here? Threshold frequency F naught is going to be theta over H, or phi over H, excuse me. Okay, next one, good little problem. We've got blue and yellow of the same intensity striking a metal. Which will have the greater kinetic energy? That's pretty straightforward. That's going to be blue. Why? Because we know if you were to be thorough, you're going to give us an equation. Kinetic energy is, once again, HF minus phi. Okay. Um, and so your argument would be that basically the, four, the frequency of blue is greater than the frequency of yellow. And we also should say phi is the same because it's the same metal. So we want to make sure that is going to be the same. Now, which beam will cause a greater photocurrent? The simple answer is to say they're going to be the same, but that's not going to be quite right. And so this is the way we think about it. And it goes back to the multiple choice problem above, uh, especially number 38. The idea is that the photocurrent, so I'm going to just call it I photo, is um, proportional to the total energy, or it's really the... Um, yeah, I'm sorry, this, let me, hold on a second, let me get that straight. Okay, so the photocurrent is proportional to the number of photons. On the other hand, we have intensity, all right, which I'm just going to call I, and I know that can be confusing, is proportional to the total energy of the um, beam of light, if you will, and that's going to be equal to the number of photons times HF. So what we can say is the if I go here, the intensity of A we know is equal to the intensity of, or intensity of blue is equal to the intensity of yellow. That was a given. So what is that? That's going to be basically NHF for each one. But F is bigger for blue, so I'm going to have a big F here and a little F here for a yellow. And therefore, if I have to have the same intensities, then I have a small N here and a big N here. And so if I have to have more photons of yellow to compensate for their less energy per punch, and I'm going to have the same total energy because the intensities are the same, then I have no more photons of yellow, which means I have a greater photocurrent for yellow. So the answer here is yellow. Okay, that's a tough little problem, but you really want to make sure you get that. Okay, um, wait a metal sketch as a function of that. So this is a little bit different. So we're doing it as a function of wavelength. So we know that energy is proportional to F. So that means energy, the kinetic energy is going to be proportional to 1 over lambda. But we want to plot energy versus lambda here. So we know there's also a threshold frequency, right? If I were to do energy versus F, we know that we're going to start here and come over and then there's at some point it starts. So for lambda, there's got to be a threshold lambda and that's got to be um, on the long end of things. So in other words, if I come from a very, very long one in, at some point we're short enough where we get that threshold, so there's my asymptote, and then it's going to be a inverse where it literally hits zero there. Okay, so there's the inverse part, but we got to have a threshold. It just doesn't go on and on. So that's a little bit of tricky one. Okay, uh, threshold frequency, how is it determined? So basically that's determined as um, you know, right, the threshold frequency when Ke is zero, right? We've talked about that. So HF naught equals the threshold frequency. So some, or excuse me, equals the work function. And the work function you should mention is uh, also determined by the metal. Last one is uh, how do the intensities compare? And once again, what we want to understand is the intensity is dependent on the number of uh, things given off. So you're told that the one has more than the other. Anyway, long story short, that's going to be Arturo. Okay, so if you have any questions, make sure you reach out to me. Um, otherwise, we're good to go.